You are listening to The Stick and Hack Show, a show about golf and life from a stick and a hack. Now, here is your host, Adam Grubb and Mike Ryan. All right, everybody, welcome in. Stick and Hack Show. It is season three. Welcome to you. Appreciate you guys being here. Hopefully, uh, this year, we can do, I don't know, Mike, what? 10 times better than last year, which I don't know how that's possible because we rocked it last we did. year. We did. We were one of the bright spots of 2020. It's a difficult bar. It is, but we were a bright spot of 2020. In yeah. fact, we were on a list, the top three bright spots of 2020. Guess who was on it? Who? Stick and Axe Show. Ooh. Yeah, me specifically. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? I wasn't other? Correct. Like, that's like, yeah, that's Mike exactly, Ryan, exactly like, what I'm no, saying. No, not that guy. Show brought to you uh, this week by sponsor. Uh, no, let me try that again. Show brought to you this week by UpGlove, and uh, UpGlove is one of our new member perks partners. They're introducing golfers to a streamlined golf glove buying experience with less hassle and less expense. We know what that process is like, Mike, and it sucks sometimes. UpGlove is a subscription-style glove service that gives golfers gloves as frequently as they need without a long-term commitment. Want to save even more money? UpGlove is part of the member perks program for Stick and Hack members only. Sign up as a free member of Stick and Hack and go to our Members Perks page to get the code and current deal from UpGlove, proud sponsor of the Stick and Hack show. First guest of 2021, it's another Adam. Mike, I'm sorry, you've got two, not numbered. You've got two Adams you've got to deal with now. <laughs> Adam Young from AdamYoungGolf.com is on the show. He is an instructor, and his business was upended last year, obviously, as most were. And uh, he has moved a lot of his trainings and instruction online, AdamYoungGolf.com. He's going to be talking to us about golf instruction, something I'm sure you are are waiting with bated breath as you've written 27 jokes already about how much instruction I need. So that's, uh, I'm excited. It's it's true. I'm excited for that. It's true statement. You know, golf instruction, Mike, uh, for, for me has always been one of those things where it is, it's the last thing I want to do for a variety of reasons. It's the last thing a lot of people want to do, but it's also something that they should do. If you find the right instructor, your immediate thoughts, when you hear golf instruction, what do you think of in, in the space? Yeah, I think it's one of those for most, I would say, uh, casual golfers that's intimidating and then on probably on some level they feel a little uh they just have a hard time taking criticism. And it's not necessarily when you're going to an instructor, it's not necessarily criticism. It's something right. to to make you better, but I think a lot of people have a hard time with with there's so many complexities of the golf swing that there are a lot of instructors out there that make it too complicated and then people just get frustrated and they're like, I'm done with this, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, and so. the, and the the complication, the um the idiosyncrasies of the swing are enough to drive anybody mad, but then to have someone tell you that you have to, you're uh, an eighth of an angle or eighth of an inch off of your angle, forget it. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll bowl <laughs> at that point. <laughs> um, so this is uh, from Sir Walter Simpson from The Art of Golf, 1887. He said, the player whose driving is feeble should hit harder unless it is because he is nipping, in which case, he ought not to nip. Yep. I'll repeat that because it bears repeating. <laughs> the Art of Golf by Sir Walter Simpson, 1887. The player whose driving is feeble should hit harder, which is still a tip, honestly, that we use today in 2021. <laughs> Unless it is because he is nipping, in which case he ought not to nip. Now, for my money, that's instruction I can follow. And, I, and it's, if I had somebody telling me that, I'm in. 100%. I just won't nip then, I guess. Right? What is that? I don't even know. I don't, I don't know what the hell I don't means. Even know what the hell that means. I have no idea. <laughs> the following is from January, February issue of Golf Journal 1993. All right? I'm going to read this verbatim. All right. Golf instruction through history has been a stew of the bogus and the brilliant with dashes of originality and insight blended with lots of snake oil and large chunks of baloney. <laughs> we eat golf instruction up. Whether or not it is good for our games is beside the point. Golf is so lonely and difficult that there is a psychic benefit merely from receiving counsel, regardless of its baloney content. (laughs) This guy's the best. (laughs) If the advice does not click, we fret that we are inadequate to receive it, not that the advice itself was flawed. In golf, the teacher is to the Tyro as the Wizard of Oz was to Dorothy. Golf instruction is not improved with time, though the photos and drawings here, this is again from the Golf Journal 1993, January, February issue, Proved that some of the early teachers were clueless. 
No modern how-to golf writer is more graceful or incisive than two of the pioneers, Horace G. Hutchinson and Sir Walter G. Simpson. Sir Walter G. Simpson, by the way, said a second ago not to nip. <laughs> As for hands-on teaching, there was simply a lot less of it in the old days and a lot less was expected of the lesson. Golf was primarily a match play sport. Strategy and psychology were more important than technique. That part there, Mike, yep. is the most important part of the entire 300-word paragraph. Because not that is still the case today. Yeah. That it is more strategy and psychology with yourself than it is the instruction. But golf instruction has not changed dramatically over the years. Yeah. You still have a person telling you what to do and telling you what you're not doing right and telling you how to how to do the sport you're doing. Golf instruction gets a bad rap sometimes. And I think it gets a bad rap because it is so technical in nature. And because there is that one-to-one personal connection you have with a with an instructor, right? But name me a sport that somebody in their life has just been able to do flawlessly and perfectly throughout their entire career. Feel free. I'll give you some time. Um, Tiger Woods. <laughs> <laughs> no, not true. Not true. Tiger has. Wasn't had, he on like Johnny Carson when he was like five years old? And But he's never had instruction. That's my point. He's oh, had well, coaches maybe. and instruction true. his entire career. He might have just picked he, it up. He, no, who knows? He, and he probably did. But at some point, he's always had instruction and he's at I the know. top level. Yeah. Jordan, name For a, sure. a, 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 an athlete. I think golf instruction gets a bad rap because of what that article said twenty yeah. or less, almost 20 years ago, which is that it's the person... Not the instructor. The person can't do it. So they say, well, this, this doesn't work. Yeah. Right? I, well, you know, I think, and, and I think it, it speaks to, I've always felt the best teachers in anything, not just golf, but teachers in general, are the ones that are able to relate to who they're teaching and are able to adapt what they do to the people they're teaching. Correct. Because... People are so individualized and they, they, they learn so differently that I, I've always felt that if you feel like you can fit people into a box when you teach them, that you're doing yourself and them a disservice. So. And in, in there, the golf instructors of today, um, there's also this, uh, the, the price. They're yeah. you know, 80 to $150 an hour, uh, in some cases, uh, much more. Yeah. And depending on who you are, is that worth it to your game to, to shave off a couple strokes? or to hit the ball a little further. Right. No. Instruction is primarily looked at for either both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. You've got your sticks over here that are trying to win the county am and you got your hacks over here trying not to embarrass himself. Everybody in the middle of that does instruction help and do that and should they care. And we're going to talk to Adam Young about that yeah. in just a little bit. Harry Varden famously never had lessons. Now this is alleged. Okay. I didn't know Harry Okay. Huh. Really? No. Okay. I've never I, I, I never met him. Good to know. Um, Harry Varden famously never had lessons. Even Arnie, or Arnold Palmer, uh, one of the most famous golfers of all time, for I those of you that, yeah, just joining the Stick and Act show, and golf specifically, uh, even Arnie, a son of a golf instructor, is rumored to not give any credence to instruction. Uh, now, let me tell you the story about the first lesson. All right? Now, this is uh, half-assed internet research, but nonetheless, <laughs> hammered. In. Oh, shocking. Yeah. <laughs> literally Googled. Is that how we always do it? Literally Googled seconds ago. <laughs> uh, the story goes, as the first lesson in golf, which cost $3, which back then was probably $40,000, uh, consisted, this is the 18, late 1800s, consisted of a kid hitting 12 balls into an open field at another kid who was fielding the balls. The instructor gave a new tip for each shot and then sent the kid on his way. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's the best way to do instruction. A new tip for each shot. I feel like that's kind of like the turn and burn approach. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody... You do do that. Uh, no, now nope. do that. And now this. Now do that. <laughs> later. <laughs> later, idiot. $3, please. Well, let's Step right up. Let's bring somebody in who probably has a different, uh, a different way of doing things. Adam Young from AdamYoungGolf.com joins the Stick and Hack Show. Adam, how are you? I'm great. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on. You're very welcome, sir. Thank you for being a part of uh, of the first show of 2021 mm-hmm. and uh, season three here. So you heard some stories about instruction. You heard our thoughts about it. Um, first of all, have you ever thought in your in your life that uh, 12 shots, 12 different tips, is that even possible? 
I see that's how amateurs teach each other, definitely. Um, <laughs> and I, I had a blog post, which is recently why, why you shouldn't take advice off your amateur friends. Number one, because they're trying to take your money off you anyway. But um, usually the instruction goes, you know, try this and that doesn't work. And then try this, that doesn't work. And eventually if you throw enough, at the wall, something will work, right? But it might have nothing to do with the with what was actually going on. Adam, you're exposing uh, and then that's you're exposing my money making scheme. <laughs> you're exposing my money making scheme. This is how I take all of Adam's money. <laughs> yeah, you want to be really up. You want to be really up high, and then just just slice as hard as you can. <laughs> well, Adam, your 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 year um, last year was probably crazy because you live in a world where you've got to have one on one instruction. You live in a, in a spot where you you need to be hands on, and you weren't able to do that last year. You moved a lot of your instruction. Uh, you moved your your entire operation um, to to Las Vegas, where you're at now. But you you moved a lot of your instruction online. And, and you were one of the first um, that we know that, that did that early. You saw the, the signs and, and you said, okay, so I got I to gotta do something here to, to keep things afloat. So kudos to you on, on that front. But how did, how did you feel moving your instruction online, number one, helps those people that we talked about earlier, those, uh, the, those guys that don't want to spend an hour uh, on a range and don't have the time to spend an hour on a range, get an instruction have you stumbled upon by accident and, and by, by sheer uh, survival instincts on an instruction method that could work for more people? Yeah, definitely. I mean, my, I came to Vegas with the intention of just setting up a facility here or, you know, going into a golf club and doing, doing events and then COVID hit right as I'm setting everything up. So that kind of derailed everything. But luckily, in since 2012, I've been blogging, I've been writing books, I've been creating some online content. So I kind of had that backing me up. And, you know, I use this as an opportunity. It's, you know, what, what are you going to do if you, if you can't work? So I've dived head into, dove head into um, online instruction. And, yeah, it's, it's going quite well. I do miss um, working with people one-on-one, definitely. But... It has got me thinking more about how I can reach a broader audience. And even people like yourself, you've got the, the stick who I can talk to about ball flight laws. I can talk about launch angles, spin rate, spin access. I can go as deep as they want into mechanics. But I know lots of people hate that. In fact, in my own game, I don't do that. I don't think like that. I'm much more like, like the hack in my mindset now. Um, so I, I know that there are a huge amount of people out there who don't want to change their swings. They don't want to be spending hours on the range. And so how do you get those together? So I've tried to do that. I certainly have tried to do that. I might have alienated myself from both groups. Hopefully I haven't. But um, yeah, I, I think there are certain bits of instruction that apply to everybody. So, you know, even if I had Tiger Woods in front of me, I've never coached him, unfortunately. I'd love to, but... Um, or a complete beginner, there are certain things I would be looking at with both of those players. They are how are they how are they striking the ground with an iron? So you know, are they are they contacting an inch behind it, two inches behind, or are they contacting ball first and turf, or are they not hitting the ground at all? You know, in a thin shot. So how are they contacting the ground? How are they contacting the face? Are they hitting toe, heel, or center? And then where's the face pointing? Is it is it too open or is it closed? So I would, I would summarize golf as those are the three most important things that are applicable to all. You could go more in depth into other ball flight laws, but those are the things that I'm looking at with every single golfer. I think they're the things that bind us all as players. And I think if you get those three uh, in functional places, I was going to say correct there, but in functional um, ranges, you will be a better golfer. And I think that's nice for really analytical players to kind of, take all that complexity that they have in their head and say, well, actually, I can just boil it down to these three things. And it's also nice for the complete hack to, to go, oh, wait, you tell me I don't have to get P1 to P10 absolutely perfect. I can just get these three things better and I, I will about? improve my <laughs> what the hell's exactly, talking about? Yeah, position. My God, P1. Yeah, I've never playing golf twenty five years. I've never heard that. He doesn't do well with P one. <laughs> Adam, you are the uh, you are the uh, best selling author of the Practice Manual, the Ultimate Guide for Golfers. It's an international best selling book in five countries. You've been featured on the Golf Channel. 
You are a holistic golf coach. Uh, you're seeing the game as more uh, than the sum of its parts. Your blog reaches over a million golfers each year. Everything that I've said so far, I'm jealous of. So good for you. Uh, <laughs> discussing everything from the technical to the philosophical. Now, Leon, uh, or Lynn Marriott and Pia Nielsen, who were on the show uh, a couple episodes ago from Vision 54, this is what they said about you, sir. Adam is, and uh, let me clarify, Adam Young. <laughs> Surely not me. <laughs> Adam Young is definitely one who commits to continuous learning and making a difference. He believes that the coaching of the future in golf will include much more than just technical knowledge. And you illuminated that uh, just seconds ago. Um, what, do, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by the future of golf will be more than just technical knowledge? Well, I think instruction is, I would say 99% of it has been based on let's pick a player, any player, and let's try and copy their swing. So let's break down their swing in, in nth degree. You know, this is where they are at setup. This is where they are at the top of their swing, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that can certainly work because anybody who takes the time to go and try and copy a swing is going to be practicing, right? So by default, if they're practicing, they're going to get better. Now, whether it was that model that got them better, you know, there, there's a good call, certainly, that that, there are certain positions that can help you. But I think that's just how instruction has been. And even to this day, if you pick up any golf magazine, 99% of the instruction articles are going to be based around movement. Now, what I've always wondered is, well, why is Jim Furyk such a good player? Why has Jim Furyk got 80 million in his bank account and two scores in the 50s? Yeah, he looks like an octopus falling out of a tree. I stole that from someone else. Um, <laughs> Don't say or, that. You Don't know, say that. You, that's yours. You claim you that. Take that's, that for what that's it is. Yours. Yeah, no I'll one's claim, no Okay, one's, I'll claim it. Yeah. No, no one's listening. <laughs> I'll claim it. <laughs> but um, yeah, you have all these different players with different swings. I used to use Tiger as a model, right? As a kid, as a 15 year old kid taking up golf, I was analytical enough to go this route that everybody else is going. So I would freeze frame I, on Saturday nights I'd spend time recording Tiger Woods' spring swing freeze framing it going into the window and checking in the reflection if my positions are exactly the same and I just think that's the way that every golfer has gone and that will get you so far but there are missing elements in that and I posted a video of McElroy the other day doing everything or pretty much everything tour level so he had a tour level grip tour level setup tall level top of the swing, tall level end position. You know, I could go on, on and on. The swing looked tall level, but he topped it. The ball went like an inch off the tee. Now, it was an intentional thing. He was trying to uh, top it. It was, it was like a joke thing. But it just goes to show that, wait there, you can get all those moving pieces, the swing, the model, to look like a tall pro. And it's still possible to hit an absolutely horrible or non-functional shot. And you only have to look at a tall player when they're playing bad or if they hit a bad shot. You know, a tall player can still hit it 40 yards offline. So what has changed in that? Now, if you view their swing back, it look identical pretty much from, from one that goes 40 yards left to one that gets piped down the center. It look identical. And the difference is in those three things that I talked about. How well did they strike the ground? How well did they strike the face? And usually in a tall player, that's an issue. Where was the face pointing? So you can, you can trace it all back to that. And even with a complete amateur, if you take a 10 handicapper and you look at their best shots and their worst shots, I do this all the time where I stick their swing side by side. And in, in 95% of cases, you can't see a difference. You can't see a difference in the movement, not a noticeable one. But it's just been a small change in one of those three things. For an amateur, usually it's a ground contact issue. So let me so, make sure I understand something I, here, Adam. Uh, you're telling me that Roy McIlroy can uh, fake top it? Is that for real? Yeah, most good <laughs> players can. Absolutely. Most good, good players for him. can. <laughs> good for him. <laughs> Adam Adam Young is uh, on the program, the Stick and Act Show. It's adamyounggolf.com. You know, Adam... Uh, you talked about all that, all of that, and and one of the things we wanted to to get into, and I'm interested to hear your your thoughts is, you know, how do you see instruction today, and and what has changed over the years that's been good for the game, and when I and I mean for the game of golf in general, like how, the way instruction is approached, what has improved? 
I think um, what we talk about, I think more people are coming to realize that it's the little things that matter a lot in golf rather than just looking at positions and how the overall look of the swing is. I mean, that's important too, but the little things that matter. I think the invention the invention of TrackMan, if you guys know that, the radar device that um, detects every little bit of minutia that you'd need to know. I think that's just highlighted to people what actually changes in a shot. So as an example of that, we know that the difference between a shot that goes straight down the middle and one that hooks into the into the rough is two degrees of club face. That's all. Sorry, Adam. I know you don't like numbers and all this physics and stuff like that. But, <laughs> but uh, I, it, it's, it's, it's fine. such a you can keep small going. change. Yeah. It's such a small change that has, has, has occurred. And I think that's highlighted now in, in the industry. So more instructors are, are looking at that. I think um, to Pia and Lynn's stuff as well, the human skills of this, of, um, you know, balance, tempo, things like that. But just, you know, I, I call human skills understanding what's going on. Like for the average amateur, when they hit a bad shot, they turn around to their buddies and they say, what went wrong? And their buddies throw, oh, you lifted your head up or you did this with your arm or that with your arm. And it's all rubbish. It never, it, it's never the case. <laughs> I've, I've recorded people. I do this all the time. One of my favorite things to do, and it's so weird, but this is golf instructor, instructor stuff, is to record a player when they've hit an awesome shot and then record them when they said they've lifted their head. And I stick them side by side. I've never seen a player lift their head early on the ones that they say they have. All their buddies watching say they have, but it's just never the case. It's always just been something small. And so uh, just getting the player to understand what actually went wrong with that. You know, oh, that was, that went left. No, oh, club face was just a couple of degrees close. Okay, no biggie. I can, I can fix that. So I think understanding, uh, having that understanding is key. And that's a human element. That's not a technical thing. That's just a, a, a golf intellect thing. Um, and things like strategy as well. I know you guys mentioned it earlier. Things like club selection, just picking the right club, picking the right targets as well. You can knock a hell of a lot of shots off your game just by picking good clubs and good targets and never, ever changing your swing. I think that has been a, a huge thing that's come together I think a lot of people are starting to converge on these ideas. I know the book, Every Every Stroke Counts, Every Shot Counts by Mark Brody. He gave a lot of statistics that are based on tour, and, and that's all bringing together the stuff that uh, Scott Fawcett has done on strategy as well. I had a lot of stuff as well before I met Scott Fawcett, just about picking, about thinking your, sh of your shot pattern as a bigger spread rather than just aiming directly at a target. Like, I never aim at a pin. I, ha I've, I haven't aimed at a pin since I was maybe 15 years old. I'm always aiming to the right side of the green or the middle of the green because my shot pattern tends to miss to the left. Hey, Adam, you and, and, I, have so, something, you and I have something in common, but probably for different reasons. <laughs> I've, never, I've never aimed at a pin either. <laughs> uh, let, let, me, let me ask you this. You're, you're talking about the human element, and I think, honestly, we could do 30 minutes just on that because that – in, in and of itself is is probably one of the number one things that people forget that they're human even even professional mm -hmm. golfers they are human people that make mistakes and make errors and the amateur uh, has this su such a high level of of um, need to be perfect on the golf course the personalities that come out in golfers and and you can say you learn a lot about somebody when you play golf with them because of how they handle things what are the personalities that you work with and that you teach, uh, the different types, and how do you move your instruction and your your coaching to those different personalities? Mike and I are very different. I'm not sure if you're aware of that, <laughs> but we're very different in the way that we, we bring in knowledge and information and handle life. And because of that, we are going to, you're going to teach us very differently. Uh, you, me, you're, you're, you're sketch drawing and, and using crayons. Mike, you, you've got your, your, the, uh, the stats out, right? How do you do that on, uh, with, with somebody you've never met? I think the tasks would be very similar. So, Adam, if I'm teaching you, it might be, okay, just hit a couple of shots right for me, hit a couple of shots left for me, now hit one down the middle. 
And we, we work on games like that. I might draw a dot on the ground. So one of, one of my favorite drills is to draw a little dot on, on a concrete slab, give you an old club and just say, see if you can hit that dot for me. As simple as that. And the first few will surprise you. You'll be like four or six inches behind that dot. And then after a few swings, without me telling you any information, without me telling you anything about weight, shape, lag, anything like that, I don't have to mention that at all. You will figure out how to move your contact from six inches behind to closer to that dot in just five swings. And if I leave you there for an hour, you'll be able to hit that spot over and over. And that's one of the most important skills in golf. Now, if I was teaching a stick, I might talk, if they ask me, well, how do I do this better? I might suggest certain things like, oh, well, you could shift your weight a little bit more, or you could feel like a later release. In fact, I would actually try and steer the analytical player to more just towards, well, let's just see if you can do it first without me giving you any that information. And, you know, I might even layer on certain things, like let's play a game out of this. You know, analytical people are using numbers-based, so I'll say, all right, every swing you make will write down how many inches behind that spot you were. So, okay, that one was four inches behind. That one was three. At the end of 10 balls, I'll say you average two inches behind. Let's do another 10-ball test and see if you can improve it. So analytical players tend to like that kind of stuff. I mean, some non-analytical players like those kind of games as well. But yeah, I can just, the tasks would remain the same, whether you're a tall player, a stick pack. Um, it's just the way that I would guide you towards improving at those tasks might be a little different. And that, that's not even stick and hack stuff. That, that may just be what you like, what you prefer, whether you're numbers based or whether you just want to be left alone to figure it out for yourself. Yeah, that's awesome. And that, that actually, you know, that kind of lends to what I said earlier about, you know, finding a way to teach people differently the same thing. And, you know, you, and this, this goes into my next question and you recently wrote a blog about the lie told in golf and, and that is, it has to be this way, but you asked the question, what if, you know, in your mind, um, why, you know, should people, you know, keep an open mind when they're going into a teacher, a, a golf teacher or an instructor? Um, and why do you keep an open mind when you're, you're teaching a new student, um, to approach the game? Yeah, I mean, I, I was always, when I first started golf, I was in that mindset of one way. There's only one way yeah. to do this. It has to be the Tiger Woods way. And that, as I said, that can work. If you follow one model, you're probably going to get better from practicing and stuff like that. But you, those that belief starts to crack a little when you see Jim Furyk, when you see, it's not just Jim Furyk, it's Dustin Johnson. You know, Dustin Johnson has a strong grip and yeah, bowed at the yeah. top. You get Webb Simpson, who's strong grip and cuts at the top. You get um, Spieth, you get Bryson, who are weak grip. So even the fundamentals, the things that you would call fundamentals, they're all over the place on tour as well. Um, so you cracks start to appear and then you start to coach and you start to see some players who you improve the look of their swing. It gets better. And I found this myself as well. I could improve the look of the swing and hit it worse. And I go, well, what's that all about? And then you, you come across players who look horrible, like absolutely horrible. And yet they can get the ball around in, in decent numbers. And you think, well, what's that all about as well? And then I started experimenting. When I started learning that with it, all that matters is those three things, or those are the three most important things. I started saying, well, let's just see, let's just for fun see if I can do it in different ways. So I would do it just with the stupidest grip. I'd grab the club like this and just stand there for five, ten minutes, an hour, and see if I could make those three things correct and see what the ball did. And you know what? Once I got those three things correct, the ball flew off. Great. I couldn't create the same speed gripping it like that. I started doing old, what I call old man swings, where I just basically lock my body and then just flick my arms at it like that. And still I could get it down there. I could get, I could pummel these balls over and over and over. I became quite a good trick shot artist. That's and my favorite one of swing, I think. In left yeah. The old man swing, I think, is <laughs> my favorite swing. There is swing. nothing, I've never seen an old man swing not work in the history it of is. golf. It's the best. <laughs> and they beat me exactly. every single damn time. <laughs> Because, exactly. Because yeah. they, they, I mean, th why? Because they're hitting the the face of the club on the ball, and they're that they're blessed with with perfect uh, swing. No, because all of the things they've learned how to how to hit the ball the way they need to hit the ball for them. Then 
right? They didn't swing that way when they were 30 or 25. They're swinging that way now because they're 75 years old, and that's fine. And they still, they, 180 yards, 190 yards is still a good drive for for them. And they're happy. Because yeah. why, why are they happy, Mike? Because they hit it square. It's right down the middle. Yeah. 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 Exactly, yeah. And they, in fact, old guys can be relatively consistent because a lot of the old guys, they don't, they don't want instruction. They don't want to be tinkered with and messed with. They just ah, stick with the same thing. Ah, leave, so me leave me alone. Leave me alone. Let me smoke my cigar and leave me the hell alone. You young punk, you don't know what they, the hell you're talking about. <laughs> you know what? Lots of people don't. <laughs> Lots of instructors <laughs> do, unfortunately. Adam Young is a guest um, here from AdamYoungGolf.com. He's a uh, coach and instructor and a best-selling author. Adam, uh, let's talk about practice for a second, all right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, not going to do it. I'm not going to. Practice? Nope. No? We're not going to. <laughs> I made a, made a bet with myself that I wouldn't. So let's talk about practice. Uh, and the only difference between uh, and the difference between just hitting balls and truly getting better, you've given several drills already that I think people will take away from from a, a practice session. A practice session doesn't need need to be ninety minutes in a bunker. It can be a range session. It can be a warm up session. Anytime you're hitting a ball, in some cases, could be practice for whatever is happening next. So, what is the difference, and what are some of the things that you tell your students? And, and, and anybody you play golf with, here's how you properly put in a, a practice session on something. You realize my book was 400 pages on that, right? I do. <laughs> yeah, whole, I do. What's, and you've got, you've got two yeah. and a half minutes to get your answer out. So go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, then. One, I would say, get rid of the myth of perfect practice makes perfect. Right? That's how everybody practices. I'm just going to groove my swing. All right. I would say at least add an element of variability. So what I mean by that is try and hit some shots to the right. Try and hit some shots to the left. Try and hit it off the toe. Try and hit it off the heel. Try and nip it a little bit. <laughs> there you are. Nip I'm it. Alluding oh, nip to the stuff it. you said earlier. Yeah, yeah, so nip it. Nip it off the turf. Right. And then try and dig in. So nip it, just clip the top of the turf. And then dig in deep. So try these things. That's what I did as a, as a kid, or that was some of my practice as a kid. And I believe most of my, my biggest learning experiences came from that. Just, it's just active play, right? And you look at even in the animal kingdom, what is play? Why do, why do, I've got a new puppy and he's playing all the time. They're just exploring boundaries. And that's what we lose as adults, right? We get locked into it. All right, this is just the only way to do it. And play breaks us free from that. There's so many things you can learn from it. I'll take lifelong slices and I'll just ask them, close the face 80 degrees if you want. Make a point at your body. Now grip it and now hit a few shots just to see what happens. And they, and they see it go left and then I say, well, okay, now do it 60 degrees, now 40 degrees, now 20 degrees closed. And they start to get to the point where, whoa, this feels awesome. This feels really compressed. That ball's going two clubs farther. And I'm actually getting the ball to curve to the left this time. I'm like, yeah, great. That's awesome. Now you can use that to fix your slice when you're on the course. So just that, you know, doing that for 20 minutes, half an hour, that can have a lifelong effect on that person because they now know what it takes to fix their slice. If they want to improve at their ability to control that, more practice is better. But they'll always have that concept there. Or I can take a lifelong shanker and just ask them to try and hit it out of the toe and just, you know, just experiment with it. I'll get a, a, a bottle of Dr. Scholl's foot spray a can of Dr. Shaw's foot spray, spray the face so it leaves a white coating. And then I just ask them to intentionally play around with hitting different parts of the face. I've never had someone say they don't learn something from that. And so, it's, yeah, it's just play. You know, Adam, and you, you mentioned this, uh, you made the, the statement, uh, someone can go out on the course and then fix their, their slice while they're on the course. And my question is, you know, why – is it anytime someone gives a, a tip mid round that it's the worst thing in the world and people are just like, Oh my God, what I can't, I, no, no, I can't do. And they freak out. It seems to me like something like that would, uh, help people, um, you know, to be able to do those things. Yeah. It's because we're actually very consistent as humans, even though the result isn't consistent, we are incredibly consistent with what we do. Like a shanker isn't going center, 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 random shank, 
That doesn't happen for, for 95% of the cases. A shanker is hitting heel, 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 slightly more towards the heel, and that's yeah. a disaster. So they see disaster occasionally, and they say, I'm so inconsistent. And they're like, no, you've got a tall pro strike quality. And so we are very consistent until we try to consciously change something. And when someone gives us a tip, that then we're thinking about our swing, and then that does open up a bigger spread of inconsistency. And because golf is so precise, it only takes a very tiny change to make a huge outcome. So if someone says, oh, um, you know, you did, you did something on that and then you try and change it. Well, even if the next swing you change it by a quarter of an inch, that can be enough to make a completely different shot. And then that can leave you bouncing around between, oh, my God, that was too much. and Oh, that was too little. And, oh, my God, I, I can't even find my old swing anymore. Mm. So even, and he, that's even if the advice is correct. Yeah. I mean, that advice could be absolutely on the money. And, and it, it wouldn't work. So even as a teacher, I, I tend not to give any technical advice on the course with players. I might give them strategy advice like, oh, you know, you're, you're, every shot a day has gone 20 yards right. Why not aim at the left side of the fairway? Um, or the only occasion I would give technical advice is if someone is having an absolute nightmare and every shot is, say, a hosel rocket. And then you might say to them, well, just try and, you know, a line out of the toe today. I know a guy like that. Or, or maybe just go home. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you just go home. Okay. Let's try this again tomorrow because you, sir, are a disaster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that can work, but I find that good. In the uh, issue. <laughs> I like to fix the issue. Adam, I, I'll tell you this. Uh, as a, If I were to, to have a on, oh, it's producer Shane, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. But a perfect show ruined yet again by producer Shane. Um, and look at him. He's over there in the corner just sheepishly. We need to get him a dun dunce cap. <laughs> we, we, do. dunce cap? we do. Do you have any instruction for producer Shane, Adam, that can uh, bring him into, into 2021, the season three of the Stick and Act show? Um, I don't even know what the hell I was saying. doesn't matter. Uh, Adam Young Golf is uh, – oh, I know what I was going to say. If, if I were to pick an instructor or a coach – I want your type of thinking because you have a, a very unique and cool way of getting people to a relax and just hey, come on guys. This is not, it's not that difficult and it's not that, that important either try this or try that. And then whatever of those works, keep doing that. Am I, do I have that Can right? I give an example of that? Absolutely. I'm going to give an example of that. There was a guy, cause I run these forums on Facebook and I, I don't actually actively go in there. So I, before people run on in there asking for free advice. But there was this one guy <laughs> who... Because, uh, <laughs> hey, all my I tell you, Stick and Act members will do that immediately. <laughs> I know a few There's that will, will bombard you. people in there at the yeah. moment. 80,000, I just couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> if I wanted to. But there was one guy recently who, who said, well, I'm hitting it really well, but one in 20 shots, I catch a groove low on the face. And then he posted it and... and he had just loads and loads of advice from people. Oh, you need to do this with your swing. You need to cut, keep your posture. You need to stop early extending. And I just said to him, why can't you just dig in a millimeter deeper into the ground? That's that, it can be that simple. It doesn't have to be. Honestly, and people are really good at it. If you That's ask the a player, just, just dig in a little bit deeper. I love that. Instead of clipping the top of the grass, just go for the base of the grass. People can do it. It doesn't have to be technical. And so, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, it's, it's hard to charge for that kind of advice, but <laughs> that's why it, it's simple advice, but it works. I love right? it. it works. Adam, Adam Young and the guest of the Stick and Act Show, AdamYoungGolf.com. Um, Adam, thank you so much. You're an incredible, uh, incredible talent and treat to talk to. We appreciate uh, the free advice that you have given here on on the program. Unless you're going to send, send us an invoice, who the hell knows? You might. I'll send um, you an invoice. Yeah. Yeah, sure you will. Uh, we're going to play a game with you in just a second. Hang tight if you don't mind. Um, and now it is time, Mike, for a new segment on the show called The Takeaway Notes. So this is where you and I uh, bring some sort of takeaway from yeah. the interview. And I don't know. I mean, this could be a this could be a 20 minute uh, conversation just with this one takeaway, but we're going to try to truncate it into one takeaway. All right. <laughs> so, uh, and we're going to start with you, the takeaway from yep. uh, today's interview. I mean, my takeaway really is, and it's something, and it, it validated something for me that I've always thought, but I've, you never hear instructors say it that often. And it's really around. And when he was talking about with, you know, concentrating on 
where are you hitting the ball? Are you hitting behind it? Are you hitting it thin? Are you hitting it? Is, it fa- is the face open? And a lot of it has to do with hand-eye coordination. I mean, that's what it comes down to and training your hand-eye coordination to actually hit the hit, you know, at the bottom of your swing. I think that's, that's one thing that people forget about and they get so caught up in all of the technical aspects and where are my hands and where are my arms. And, and like he said, talking about, you look at guys like, like Jim Furyk and, and others that are all over the place and they're totally different in their fundamentals. But when they get to the bottom of the swing, the face is square and they're hitting it crisply. So to me, it's, it's hand-eye coordination. And that's what uh, everyone talks about, Matt Wolf. It doesn't matter what happens before. Yeah. It only happen, only matters what happens at yeah. impact. My takeaway is that you can improve your game simply by picking the right club, the right target, and not changing anything. <laughs> you would. <laughs> that's, what, that's my <laughs> takeaway. Hey, this is a no-judgment zone. The Fine. takeaway moving forward. Let me <laughs> put out some ground rules here. The takeaway moving forward uh, segment of the program is a judge-free zone. The, the Adam's takeaway was, I don't have to do anything. I can just, like, aim you're, differently. You're still judging. <laughs> I was very clear in the instructions. That's my takeaway. All right, time for the game. Let's play uh, in or out. Uh, Adam, you're back. Welcome back. Um, All right. Um, the the game is in or out of our foursome. So it's the three of us, and we have a spot for a fourth person. Yep. And this, are, uh, this <laughs> is going to be music front people, Okay. It says frontmen, but uh, you know, there's uh, women front, in here. Front too. persons, yeah, front persons. That's that's I think yeah. what they're called. Sure, front persons. Yeah. All right, here we go. In or out. Uh, Steven Tyler. We go me first or him? Who, who we oh, sorry about that. Here? We're we're in the middle of an air raid out. here, so um, uh, let's um, let's t- go with uh, you first. All right. So me? You're, yeah, you're first. All right, all right. Right. In or out. Uh, Steven Tyler. Steven Tyler's in. Adam. Uh, I know who he is. I know who he is. Uh, just about. Um, oh, in, we forgot. He's in, from go over in, the pond. Yeah. He's That's a fun guy. Aerosmith. Aerosmith. Yeah, I've seen. I've seen him before. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in. All right. Perfect. One hundred percent out. Not even a chance. The guy's an idiot. Oh. You remember? He reminds me of Who? producer Shane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac. Uh, in. 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 Way in. Springsteen. In, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Adam? Bruce I'll say Springsteen. out. Never been. Yeah, I say out, too. Yeah, he's I'm going to go out then. I'm yeah. changing it. Okay, he's out. Yeah. Now, obviously, he'd be in if he said, hey. Yes. <laughs> this is an actual choice. I'm playing golf with Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Bono. From the group U2. Uh, yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go... I'm going to go out on yep. Bono. Adam Young? Bono. Yeah, I'm going to go out. He's yeah, going I'm going out. Yeah. Oh, that's a that's a unanimous out. Yeah, I think I'm out on Bono. I have zero interest. If Bono wanted to fill up my car with gas, I'd say no thanks. Yeah. Pass. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Vedder, Pearl Jam. In. Oh, man, I don't even know who Pearl Jam are. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I'm shocked. Uh, he's in. in. And we're going to uh, veto any any decision yeah, that you're is. Out, yeah. out, yeah. You're outvoted. Well, you're outvoted. He's in. <laughs> Eddie Vedder's playing golf with us. Kurt, Co- <laughs> Kurt Cobain, Nirvana. For golf, he's out. Okay, Young. Uh, too mo- moody now. Yeah. Out. Thank you. Agree. That was gonna. That's what I wrote down early in the show prep. That he's yeah. too moody. He would bring the entire thing down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, life's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, life's good. There's no reason to write poems about it and, and do everything. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, this is going to be a controversial. Paul McCartney. In. Not even close. Out. Out. 100%. Couldn't agree more, Adam Young. Adam Young and I are uh. best friends, and not just in name only. Paul McCartney's <laughs> out. I can't stand Paul McCartney. Ridiculous. Mick Jagger. Rolling Stones. Uh, I, make, mix out for me. I'm sorry. Uh, on the fence, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say in. Yeah. yeah, I say in as well. Imagine what happens in that round with Mick Jagger. Imagine the things we would we would experience for the first time ever, probably. <laughs> uh, Freddie Mercury, <laughs> uh, Queen, in, in, interesting, yeah, in, in just for the outfits alone. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent in. Yeah, Freddie Mercury. All right, Stat, uh, the stash alone. Yeah, is, good, is, good point. I'm in. Uh, Elvis Presley, in or out? In. Young. 
I was never a fan. I was never a fan, but I'd say in because I think he'd be an interesting guy. Yeah. All right. I say in too, but I want fat Elvis. <laughs> in, <laughs> the, in, the, in the jumpsuit. Yeah. yeah I, don't, in the jumpsuit. I, don't, I yeah. want, I want the glasses, the whole thing. I want yeah. mid seventies. Yeah. Bloated. Yeah. Drunk. Yeah. Fat Elvis. Yeah. That's Dr- what I want. I don't want, uh, yeah. The drugged drugged up, up Elvis. out of his yeah, mind. Yeah. Eating sure. peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Every hole. That's what I want. Oh, God. All right. Uh, that's the Stick and Axe Show, episode one of season three. Adam Young, thank you so much for your time, sir. Adam Young Golf. Uh, you can follow him on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Adam Young Golf. He has 80,000 uh, people part of his Facebook group, and he will not give you free advice. And in fact, he said earlier he doesn't even check it. So go, uh, go, go, go be a part of that. Adam, thank you. Uh, show brought to you uh, today by. UpGlove, go to uh, UpGlove and learn more about their subscription service. And uh, for your glove experience that is now brand new to you, the the days of uh, overpaying for uh, gloves are over. Uh, UpGlove is part of our Member Perks program for Stick and Hack members only. Sign up as a free member of Stick and Hack and go to our Member Perks page and see the code and current deal from UpGlove. Proud sponsor of the Stick and Hack show. Mike, proud of you. Great show. Proud of you. Happy New Year. See you later. Okay, we're done. This has been the Stick and Hack Show. Go to stickandhack.com to become a free member of the world's greatest golf club without the course.